Hello, I'm delighted to share with you our most recent research, which engages people with the sounds of the wild and features this guy, an Eastern Bristlebird. Eastern Bristlebirds are rare and they're hard to see. And the population where I live in Queensland, Australia, lives among these tall tussocks grasses, which makes them really hard to find. We can find them, however, if we know how to listen for them. I spent two years learning calls using recordings of captive birds first, so you can imagine how excited I was when I first heard their calls in the wild. That's the picture you see here, and I'd like to introduce you to one of those calls. Isn't it beautiful? Music to my ears. Well, audio recordings are pretty easy to gather as long as you can get to that rugged habitat. But making sense of the audio after you have it is the real challenge. We don't have a lot of knowledge about the calls of bristlebirds, which makes it extra difficult. I'd like to introduce you to another sound. Now, when we get audio recordings, the fantastic benefit is that we have visualizations of sound as well have a look at the shape in that what we call a spectrogram and see if you can recognize when I play it again what that call sounds like and looks like. So we informed the design of the bristle whistle challenge by our prior work in the lab. We designed and play tested a prototype as part of this paper. It includes mixed activities, including gameful, meaning structured and goal-oriented tasks, and playful, meaning freeform and exploratory activities. This was intended to inform design of nature engagement and conservation-focused citizen science. One of the features of the Bristle Whistle Challenge was that participants were receiving guidance by a conversational agent. As you see here highlighted, that was Bob the Bristlebird. He gave various comments throughout the entire challenge to assist people, and this provided sense-making and emotional support. The gamefully matching of media was actually quite engaging for people when they were looking at spectrograms and audio or matching the different photographs to specific calls of particular species. It helped to hone in attention on the calls of the birds. The playfully exploring media included looking at photographs and spectrograms and listening to the calls as well, but without any particular tasks. It also included imagining what people might see as creative shapes in the spectrograms of calls. Do you see that flower shape in there like I do? Well, these types of activities piqued interest and elicited creativity in our participants. Then we explored how they might apply what they learned to quest for calls that they were meant to identify in unfamiliar spectrograms. It actually proved to be very useful, providing them all that variety of context ahead of time for identifying particular birds. And they enjoyed the experiences. It also revealed sensory and animal preference differences, which was quite interesting. And we recommended diverse design directions because really, this is a tip of the iceberg. We need a lot more work to be done for creative and contextual audio encounters to build awareness of nature's wonders and saving species. We invite you to read the paper, view the challenge, and be sure and sing out for more info. Get involved in helping us save species by designing in ways that resonate with diverse audiences so that everyone can get involved. And with that, thank you very much for listening.